you survive 2020, you might want to count that as a win. Just think of all those other people across the globe that have it a lot harder than any of us. And that's before a pandemic started ravaging the world. Now, was 2020 just a fluke? Or is it a sign of things to come? I ran some basic math on that equation and I'm not overly happy with the answer. But I do have good news. In the modern world we live in, science and facts are very much out of fashion. We live in the new age of write your own reality. And that is why I have a big bucket of sand right here to bury my head in a little later on. But before I do that, we're gonna to need to lighten the mood a little. And nothing does that better than fixing Land Rovers. can't remember ever seeing those ones in the shop. So these are the originals that have been fully restored. And by fully restored, I mean they've gone under the wire brush and a wash in petrol and, and a little bit of paint on them with my super secret methods. We're going to start by reassembling the half shafts. Now you may recall that I had a lot of trouble getting the uni joint out. And so I did a few practice runs and things did not go well. I started out by practicing on the prop shaft using these uni joints here that were advertised as series one prop shaft uni joints. You'll notice that they don't have any rubber boots protecting the bottom, nor do they have any grease nipples in there. So they're not my first choice for a prop shaft. However, I went ahead and installed them. And it all went in surprisingly easy. But have a look at this. Hmm? Look at that. That's what I call pre-slop. So by grabbing this one here, getting our measuring stick, and go across the yoke, we get a guesstimated distance of around 75 millimeters. Then we get the original, measure that one, and oh, about 80. So that might be the cause for the pre-slop in that prop shaft. Well, we moved on to the half shaft, which I have here, and installed the uni joint because I figured that the, uh, those ones without the rubber boots and grease nipples would be perfect for this. And this is actually my second installation. The first one was a terrible job. I had a lot of trouble getting it in, and then I couldn't get the circlips to seat correctly. So why? Why was that the case? I figure that the problems involved was burring around the outer edges of these holes. And that gripped very hard the caps, which is why I struggled to get them out and had to resort to the hacksaw. Then I think what was going on, because the job was rough, that the rollers inside the caps are dislodged and they generally fall down to the bottom of the cap. And that would explain why I couldn't get the circlips to seat correctly. So being more careful and filing away the outer edges of these holes, careful not to get the file on that delicate interior, I found this job, the second one, to go extremely smooth. And all the circlips are nicely seated and we've got a brand new uni joint in at those half shafts. So what we're gonna do now, after we've cleaned all this up, we're gonna go through the process of installing the uni joint into this one. Here we are, for no particular reason, I'm gonna start off with the little stub axle part here. We've filed around the outer edges, then we've cleaned out where the circlip's gonna live, and then we've made sure that the whole interior is clean, and then 
because WD-40 is our friend. We're going to spray a little bit in there to, to assist. Okay, now we've got our uni joint. We're going to carefully remove two of the caps, making sure those rollers don't fall out. Good. Put that on a clean surface. Then, put one of those caps in there. Right. We're going to insert our DV what's it? As best we can. Push that in. Sounds good. Now you can see we've got a clamp here. Bought uh, specially for the purpose of what we're doing. However, I find that to get those caps to to go in. I find the vise is more better. So we're going to just open this up and then we're going to squeeze. Alright, so far so good. Now we'll get that other cap. Stick that in there. Maybe come from the top. I don't want those rollers to get dislodged. Squeeze that in there. Now we want to transfer this downwards. All right, got that in. That seems to be good. And we'll give that a squeeze as well. Keep that centered. So it's in the, all of the rollers. Right, delicate stuff. So that feels not too bad so far. Get our clamp. Okay. Now let's get this set up. Fit right in nicely. Good. Got that all lined up. The next stage of this adventure is to gently push that cap in. We just want it to go beyond where the circlip's going to live. Oh. And then the other side, do the same. Very exciting piece of work, this thing. Mm, precision. I like these safety goggles because I can I can still wear my seeing lenses underneath, eh? The old coot that I am. Okay, where are we? Where are we this? That one's there we go. Alright, so that's not seated properly. There we go, snapped in. So it's easy. For a rookie circlip putter in a like myself, not to realise the circlips are not seated incorrectly. Okay, done that a few times, so yep, talking as an expert. Gotta make sure they're seated incorrectly. Let's give this a Yep, see, loosened up nicely. That's got a good flow to it. Okay. Oh good, got that in. Try and keep it there. Should go in a lot easier than that. Keep that there. There we go. That was a success. These pieces are going to fit on quite tight, so 
it's most likely we will have to give them a slight roasting. Very easy to do around these parts, unfortunately. As for our application of force, we have our old friend, the pipe. But some modifications are necessary. Have a look at this. Hmm. Flares out just down there, and you can see it only goes so far. However, our screw-on um, uh, union joint will give us the distance that we need. Let's see how the first bit fits on, the distance piece. Oh, well that was easy, that went all the way. However, I don't think the inner race of our bearing is going to be quite as compliant. And I think this one's going to require a bit of a roasting. Didn't even need to use any force. All right, wow, it's making a liar of me. However, I think this collar, this collar is going to give us a little more of a challenge. Here and crunch, good crunchies. A squillionth of an inch. Ooh, I think we might be there. I think we've had a victory. Oh, oh, oh well, that's how you do it. Now it's time to replace the bits that live inside our swivel ball, such as the race for the tapered bearing, the Ralco bush, and the big roller bearing that lives in the back. But which way is the top? Hmm, see here? Different. When I first took things apart, I tried to keep them all together, but somehow, and I can't fathom how in such an organized workshop, things got mixed up and switched around. So it's time to consult our holy tome of knowledge. Mm. All right, there, hey, you can see how it goes, the sticky out bit down the bottom. All right, hopefully I'm reading this right. I've, uh, I've always been more of a heavy lifter than a thinker. I have in front of me a little box of all the bits I'm supposed to need. Gaskets and shims, we've got cheap taper bearing, lockers, Ralco Bush, and we have these. What are these? They're supposed to either have a steering arm attached or just be a bare pin to replace this section if I need to. So what the hell is that? I am flummoxed. All right. And another mystery is that here we have our original and the Ralco Bush slots in there like that and pivots. And it's a, it's a snug fit, but it, it's loose enough. However, with the new Ralco bush, <laughs> nothing, huh? This one here, however, slots in fine. That's a real WTF moment right there. So we're gonna have to do some modifications here. And I have an idea that involves a last piece of coarse grained sandpaper. And so we're gonna start eroding away the inner diameter of this bush. Now initially I had the idea that I'd wrap sandpaper around a socket, but the socket was too smooth and you couldn't quite get the control you can with your good old finger. So this is the three scrub and rotate method. We're gonna make it fit. Oh, look, the nose of it's going in. So there is serious potential. One may die of old age while they're undertaking this lengthy process. However, 
if it works, that's what we need. All right, and there we go. That is a near on perfect fit. Going in. All right. Well, that wasn't that wasn't as hard as I feared. Okay. I think that might be in. It's looking better. All right, so there's a bit of an indentation in there, and you can see the bearing looks to me like it's seated correctly. Whew. All right, that was not as horrible as I thought it was going to go, and everything looks like it's where it should be. Had to reuse the uh, original bolts because I bought a whole pile of metric ones up there and they don't fit through the hole. Well, by my reckoning, I could go ahead and put on the swivel housing what I'm thinking, I might stick in the half shaft first. I want to uh, give this surface a good oiling because you can see how sort of badly corroded it's been. I have to make sure I oil this uh, bearing race and, and, and the um, collar. And also I don't want to forget to oil up the inner axle housing oil seal. I'll need to do that as well. Feels all right. <laughs> well, the knockoff bell has sounded and we are out of time. Cruel, I know. Now, normally at Foreman and Wilms, there's, there's months separating videos. But because on this occasion, we're part way through a specific project, that would just be too nasty. So we're gonna mix it up a little bit and live dangerously and be back sooner rather than later. So we can proceed onwards and fully experience the wonders of the swivels.